Hey folks, it's Chris with the Human Project Podcast. I'm really excited for this episode because we're gonna deal with something that deals with deep emotional vulnerability. And that is experiencing compassion fatigue. Finding yourself invested too heavily in other people. Yes, that's a thing. What we'll do in this episode is talk about what is compassion fatigue, what causes it, how do you prevent it, and how do you clean up from it? Take a listen on how you can experience more joy in loving other people the way that God designed us to love other people and the way that God loves us. Hi, Mark. Hey, Chris. How are you today? I'm pretty tired. How are you? <laughs> I am doing well. <laughs> I'm not tired. <laughs> Just being silly. That's a, it's a common thing, though, to it hear is, people though. say that they're tired or busy or all of these things. Yeah. I think um, for us, a lot of us are spending a lot of time with people in community. Like, hopefully, I'm, the, our listener is spending time applying these things. And it's really easy to fall into this trap of being too in depth and too emotionally invested, yeah. which sounds weird to talk about. Right. But there's this growing trend and a popular thing that you brought up called compassion fatigue. Mm -hmm. So you got a chance recently to speak on a panel of church leaders yeah. about this. So I'm curious, why bring this topic up? What, uh, what, what prompted this? Yeah, it was um, a group of pastors and um, compassion fatigue is very common amongst pastors and others and helps professions. So as you mentioned, people who are really connecting with others deeply and, and even not just emotionally connecting, but we go further and I think a really appropriate word to use here would be uh, in trauma. People who have experienced mm. trauma or are mm. in trauma, when you're connecting with people in those situations, it can lead into this compassion fatigue. And it's just, um, yeah, it's just really hard to find the spot to be in as someone who cares deeply about people who's even like, that's what they're called to do, what they're made to do. And you're meeting people uh, in these really challenging situations where they've experienced trauma and you don't want to carry it, yeah. but you want to care for the person. And that's a really tough balance to strike because without finding the balance, it ends up in this compassion fatigue situation. Yeah, especially the way we talk about empathy mm -hmm. is uh, showing that you're trying to be with. Right. Uh, for those of us that really care about people, it's hard not to leave it at the showing. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to just be with. Yeah. And that's, I think there's a lot of that of what we are called to do. So when do you recognize that you're going from compassion and being with people to recognizing that it is fatigue? Or yeah. what is it? How would you define the difference between just being with people and like, recognizing that it's too far. And is that a bad thing? Is that possible? Mm, sure. Yeah. I, um, I, I'll also give my perspective here that I'm coming from, of course, a professional environment where in my professional environment, helping teams and leaders do product development. Well, I didn't actually encounter people in their trauma too often, right? It didn't usually go that, that deep. It did yeah. sometimes for, you know, close friends, but it wasn't because of work. Whereas working with EMI a lot, I'm starting. So it's kind of fresh for me. It's kind of new for me. Mm. Uh, a lot of the pastors that I was with, and I'm bringing some of their wisdom into this conversation. Yeah. They've been doing this for years. So, you, you know, I'm trying, trying to bring both my like fresh eyes to, oh yeah, that's what that's going, what's going on with inside of me mm. and others who have been at it for years. And so I'll say for me, recognizing what this is, is uh, walking away from a conversation or a series of conversations with somebody and just feeling the weight or the heaviness, be it emotional or mental. Mm. I think one of the one of the best definitions that I heard, I'm going to quote it here, it's from the American Institute of Stress. They define compassion fatigue as the emotional residue or strain of exposure to working with those suffering the consequences of traumatic events. So mm. it's that like residue feeling emotionally or mentally. Uh, I remember when Christine was also dealing with this and she'd just say, I just feel so heavy and like, like I can't, I just can't keep going because she was identifying mm. so deeply and walking away with it. So that can tend to lead us to being exhausted, um, being afraid to engage mm. because in a sense we're, we're kind of, it's almost like secondary trauma that, that might sound a little bit overblown, but if you are constantly in it, it's not. And so we withdraw and avoid it, which then brings shame. 
that we are not helping the people we are meant to help. Yeah. Yeah. What comes to mind for me is you talk about the avoiding piece. Uh, another thing that comes to mind for me is like a doctor that has really, really not good bedside manner. Mm. Like they come across as very clinical yeah. because they know like they can't get involved yeah. and they can't do that. And that's, uh, causes one lack of care and not the best, uh, well, one lack of caring and two, not the best care. I, I think it might be important to differentiate between compassion fatigue and say burnout or something of that okay. nature. Yep. That's a common phrase that we hear. So right. I think of burnout as like, you're just tired from working and pressing and pressing mm -hmm. and pressing too much. Yeah. You haven't rested well mm -hmm. would be a kind of, if we simplify it a bit, would be a kind of good way of looking at burnout. Whereas compassion, so so I might use an analogy for that. Sure. Let's say yeah. run a marathon. Come. You are going to be tired at the end of running the marathon. Yep. Uh, or else you're superhuman. One or the other. Um, I would get tired at the end of running a 1K. <laughs> as would I. <laughs> as would I. So at the end of that, of course you're tired because you run without break. Hmm. That's more like burnout. Okay. Whereas if you're dealing with compassion fatigue, it's like running a marathon, but picking up stones along the way and putting them in your backpack right? You keep loading mm -hmm. down. And so you're trying to run a marathon that's getting increasingly harder because you're bearing more and more weight without the rest. Okay. So that just is going to be not just exhausting, but devastatingly exhausting by the end. Okay. It's a load we were not meant to bear is what it comes down to. And so I think biblically it puts us in, I might call it like a tricky spot, this balance that we mm. talk about all the time, because on the one hand, we are called to rejoice with those who rejoice, yeah. weep yeah. with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Yep. Very clear call for empathy and being with people in their circumstance and in their challenge and joy. And yet at the same time, while that sounds like carrying it as your own, it's also not mm. our own. And I would turn to, uh, second corinthians 4 which we actually just referenced a minute ago for another reason yep but um in this passage here we're going to go down to like verse 8 we're hard pressed on every side but not crushed perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed and and i know the context of this isn't necessarily about compassion fatigue like mm -hmm. paul's talking about here but i thought it really captured this rough spot that we're trying to to articulate well yeah. here is that yes there's going to be times where we are hard pressed where we are crushed where we are uh, persecuted those types of things but we're not supposed to be completely taken out by yeah, it they're and not ultimate yes i think that's important because there's a couple ditches we can fall into with compassion fatigue mm -hmm. or that can cause compassion fatigue so two sides of a continuum yeah exactly uh, two errors or extremes we can go on. And one of them is that we go, oh, I'm just going to flame out for Jesus. Mm, yep. Right. Maybe that's one we want to put up for our, uh, um, Christianese phrases to go, go unpack, but I'm just going to flame Jesus, out for Jesus. Jesus freak. Like. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to give it all for Jesus, uh -huh. which principle wise, great. Right. Absolutely. We want to be all in and committed. Yet, I think the implication when a lot of us are saying that is like, then I'm going to exhaust myself, deplete myself, and just basically die from exhaustion of doing what God calls me to do. And there's lots of references we could pull in that support that idea. Yeah, that we want to give what God asks us to give. Mm -hmm. And yet we hear things like Paul's talking about here, where there's also a thing that keeps us from falling into the ditch. Mm. Because again, I don't think it's about us. Like the point isn't that we flame out for Jesus. The point is that we are committed yeah. to Jesus and we do what he calls us to do. And he, is, this is what I came, this is the big realization as I was thinking and praying about this before the, um, before the conference, is that the compassion and love that we feel called as caregivers to give to the people that we're with is the same, actually it's a, a shadow of the type of care and compassion that God wants to give us as well. Yeah. So let's be kind to ourselves while we are doing that with other people. Mm. It is possible. And I think it's what God calls us to. Yeah. It's like the funnel analogy. You have to be receiving it in order to yeah. pour it out and yeah. give it out. Right. Yeah. So what I'd like for us to explore next is how do you recognize when this is happening? Mm. How do you prevent it? And then how do you clean up from it? Yeah. How do you recognize when it's happening? How do you prevent it from happening? And then how do you clean up from it happening? 
So first up, how would you recognize compassion fatigue? Yeah, I think if you do a little self-assessment, you're going to tend to see things like um, feeling very tired, uh, avoiding maybe contact with others that you're concerned mm -hmm. you might be getting into that space with, um, and then starting to probably feel guilty about avoiding people uh, okay. who are, are needing that kind of help. Um, in addition, a lot of times we'll find ourselves going to some relief. If you will say self-medicating might be a very mm -hmm. strong way, but clear way of saying it. Where you're like, why am I just like watching Netflix all the time or scrolling on uh, Facebook or watching movies or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Why, why am I eating all this food, going shopping? We're, we're probably trying to escape something that feels very heavy to us and just kind of numb the pain of that, if you'll like secondary trauma that's going on there. So if okay. you're starting to see some, see some of those tendencies, uh, it would be something to consider that maybe you've got some of that compassion fatigue. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Like, like seeing like you're intentionally avoiding something. Mm -hmm. It could just be because that's a difficult thing, but yeah. compassion fatigue could be one of the, one of the reasons for it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely something to keep our antenna up for. So how do you biblically practice compassion without getting compassion fatigue? How do you prevent it? The, the first thing I would mention is what we've already talked a little bit about is that the same thing that we are feeling called to offer to other people, we want to receive from God for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So receive what God wants to offer to us. And of course that's relational clearly. Um, so that, that would just be an overarching principle in general. Uh, another would be to Sabbath, to take rest, appropriate rest times. Yep. So we can see in the pattern of Jesus throughout the gospels that even though he son of God, son of man, right? Fully capable, no question about it. He took time away. Yeah. Like there are moments where if, kind of jokingly, I'll say the disciples are like, wait, where'd Jesus go? Mm -hmm. no, he disappears. He goes off by himself and he goes to be with his father and to rest. Yeah. If Jesus needed it, how much more us, right? And, and that God, of course, built into the cycle of the week, a day where he said, I'm resting, mm -hmm. follow my pattern, essentially yep. is my shorthand version of that. So definitely Sabbath type of rest is important. And that, that there's a whole, like we could do podcast upon podcast about that. So I'll just kind of drop that there and say, go, go <laughs> look at types of rest yeah. and Sabbath and Shabbat and that kind of thing to see how to refresh through those things. Tim Keller has a really good sermon on it mm. about work and rest and balancing those two things. Okay. Um, I'll see if I can find a link for it. It might or might not be in the show notes. So if, you can find <laughs> if I can find it, it'll be in the show notes. But yeah, I think that's, I think that's a really good call out because, um, like I love the way number one, how the chosen represents that. Yeah. Like there's a couple of times where they're just like, they wake up and like, Oh, Jesus is gone. Right. Like, he knew what his rhythms were of getting rest. And mm -hmm. yes, like it's just amazing to me that Jesus needed rest. The God needed rest. Right. And like, why would we think that we don't, mm -hmm. why would we think we have this endless supply without ever yeah. replenishing? Right. That's, that's something that comes to mind for me is replenishment, mm -hmm. like spending time in the word. And like you said, receiving from God, the care that we are pouring out. Yes. Like it's really easy for us to make it one directional right. because we can justify it as like, yes, all these things are really good and I need to be doing them. Another one that I would check always coming back to the central motivation question. Mm. Like, am I experiencing compassion and compassion fatigue or am I loving people? Because one, it's what I'm called to do. It's what I'm being obedient to do, not just of making myself feel better. Yeah. Or not just like, oh, well, if I don't do it, then yeah. like looking at it from the perspective of what has God called me to do with it. And an, a, related to a topic that we've been talking about as well here in recent uh, episodes, we've been recording abiding yeah. with him so that we know what he's up to. So yeah. we've kind of got the overarch of what are we uh, what are we made for? What are we called to in general? For some of us, that's a challenge because that's like, well, I'm called to care for other people. Mm. Like everybody yeah. that comes into your path, everybody that asks for, no, what's, what's, what's daddy doing right now? What's Abba up to right now yeah. with this person? And sometimes that is, this is not for you right now Yeah, that they need to find another way. 
it's not for you. And that's, that can be tough to hear for people who care deeply about other people yeah. and are called into it. So, Commonly called empaths. Yeah. yeah. Which we are all called to be empaths in some yeah, way, shape or form. Way. Mm -hmm. I think, um, a term we've referenced in the past is what is responsible for versus responsible to, yeah. like, what are we responsible to do instead of being responsible for mm -hmm. or on behalf of the other person yes. and owning the outcome. Right. And that's not at all what we are called to do. And, and that's where it gets, that's where it gets really sticky. Oh, and yeah. I think that's, that's a lot of what we'll keep talking about probably for the rest of the few minutes we've got left in the episode yeah. or boundaries. Uh, but we'll be back to that one in a minute. I did just want to mention a couple of other things that I've, I've heard and found very helpful again in conversation with many others who are much more experienced than I, one of them is partnership. Mm. So of course we're going to bring it back mm. to community. Would yep. you expect anything less, but oh my goodness, be in community, be in partnership with others yeah. who are doing this type of work as well so that you can, they can kind of look at you and say, you're taking some of that load. It's not yours to carry. And also to be with you also in this kind of secondary trauma that yeah. you're going through as well. So that's really powerful. Uh, and using that as an example is the last thing. So while Christine and I were learning our way through this in the past year, uh, we sat down with Dave and Pam Ping, the former uh, directors and leaders of EMI, and kind of checked with, in with them in this type of partnership model. And, um, and they recommended a very simple practice. Like when you walk away from a conversation with somebody that you, you know, it's just, it's a heavy, deep kind of one of those thick conversations yeah. where you've gotten, somebody has revealed something really, really challenging, um, intentionally take a moment to pray and open your hands and give it to mm. God. Like have mm. that intention walking away from it, that it is God's and not mine. That person is God's child. Not like it's again, it's all back to the boundaries we're talking. Yeah. We've just talked about all these things kind of tied together, the relational abiding, but just open our hands to it and give that person and that situation to God. Cause otherwise I might just be holding on to it. Yeah, that's, um, I think a really good example of that is parenting because mm. it is really easy to just experience fatigue in general Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and parenting, mm -hmm. but compassion fatigue is really good. Like when Sophia needs uh, disciplined, mm -hmm. like she's not doing something that she's supposed to be doing, or she's doing something she's not supposed to be doing. Like there is a consequence for that. And, um, I was reading a book called grace based discipline. And it's talking about exactly that, like mm -hmm. removing yourself and like removing the behavior from who the person is. And I think yeah, there's a lot yeah. of correlations there mm -hmm. of like, I cannot control how Sophia turns out. I cannot control how grace turns out. Yeah. So realizing my part in it is obedience of being consistent, of setting good boundaries, of enforcing uh, discipline when necessary, enforcing consequences when necessary. And that is it. It's not next time they mess up that I think, oh man, I messed this all up, but it's about what is my responsibility now in the present moment, right. in the obedient moment. Yeah. And I think that's instead of harboring it and holding it with you ongoing, it's what does mm -hmm. that obedience look like in that moment? Yeah. And, and there's a realization that I'm coming to that if we take that parenting example and put it in these traumatic situations we're talking about, which is kind of like plugging it into an amplifier and, mm -hmm. and, and and turning it, which is hard to imagine because what you're talking about is hugely impactful, right? You're raising kids, <laughs> right? <sighs> raising yeah. human beings. Yeah. Um, but the, the thing that I'm starting to realize is everybody is broken, mm. which you can just nod your head and go, of course they are. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, like we're all deeply messed up Yeah. and a lot of people have a lot of trauma. And so as we are engaging with each other, we're going to recognize those things and see those things and, and ideally even be invited into some of those places mm. that are really difficult. And we want to handle them well for the person in the moment and then also be able to walk away. Something else the Pings said to us, a phrase was holy forgetfulness, which I thought was an interesting hmm. phrase that there's an aspect of this, of forgetting, not like not remembering for connection purposes, but in the sense of like, I don't want to be constantly thinking about that person's traumatic situation and chewing on it and wondering and worrying about that's yeah. not my role. 
that's me sticking another stone in my backpack while I'm trying to run the marathon, right? Yeah. I want to ask God to give me holy forgetfulness and rely on him to bring things to mind when I need to be praying about them or yeah. contacting the person or something like that. Yeah. That's yeah. a that's a freedom move. Yeah, I think that's really good. And in the aspect of freedom, let's imagine somebody is in this, which is probably not too hard to imagine. Mm -hmm. Somebody's already experiencing this compassion yeah. fatigue. How do they get themselves out of that? Yeah. In addition to all the things we just said, which were prevention measures, yep. but are recovery measures as well. Um, the main thing that I heard in talking to these experienced saints who do this all the time is boundaries. I would summarize mm -hmm. it as boundaries. Uh, so there like was start them. Yeah. Like try and figure out what are healthy boundaries so that you can mm -hmm. be present with people in need as God calls you to, and yet also not be carrying that around with you yeah. uh, when it's not yours to bear. And that that's not easy, certainly, and it's very situational. Uh, so it's hard to summarize that in, in you know, a few minutes here in a podcast, but yep. I will say the, the best kind of quotable thing that I heard from a pastor named Frank, love this guy, uh, he said, the circuit breaker, as he called it, the circuit breaker for me is that I don't want to care about the situation more than that person does. Quite often what's happening is you're taking on the load for somebody else. We're taking else. on the load. We're trying to care about it because we don't see that they're caring about this aspect or this mm. way or doing this thing that would really help them. And we're trying to care enough about it that they do that. Yeah. And that actually, that's very that, much that's, a, like we're trying to be the engine of their yeah. healthiness and they need to work with God for that. Yeah. And we need to only be with them as much as they're um, in it, I guess you'd say. So that's that's a type of boundary that I thought was really helpful. Yeah, that's very much that responsible for mm -hmm. thing instead yep. of responsible to. Right. And I think going back, something else that would help is checking the motivation for that. Like, why why is that happening? Yeah. And then also, like you mentioned, rest, not just mm -hmm. time away, because most of the time, compassion fatigue is an ongoing mental thing. So just getting away. Yes is not going to solve that, but yeah. look at the motivation and give yourself rest by experiencing what God has called you into. And I think this is a really helpful topic because there's not shame in experiencing it. Mm -hmm. And if people are experiencing compassion fatigue, it is a sign that God is working in them yeah. and they have good connections mm -hmm. and good relationships with mm -hmm. vulnerability and people are right. opening up to them. At the same time, watch the responsible for versus what is obedience and being responsible to. Yeah. What are you called to do? And there is freedom in that. There is joy in that. That to yes. me, of the people that I've seen experiencing compassion fatigue, that's the number one thing to go first mm. is joy. Mm. And so, like you said, experience what God gives in this yes. first. Yeah, Take some time to do that. Take some time to practice that. Know his compassion. Know his love for you. Uh, and that's what I find repeatedly as I as I'm and continue to go on this journey of abiding with Jesus is that He always starts with affirmation mm. and love for me, and we go from there. Yeah, it's like I need it all the time. Oh wait, I need it all the time. That's okay. That's exactly. He's not surprised by that, and so I think everybody else does too. The final thing that I would say is if you've been listening to this and you go, I'm not sure I'm really experiencing compassion fatigue. Great. Like no, no, that's also not shame, Yeah. but also be aware of people around you who might be. Mm. Or if you are reach out. Yeah. We'd love to help. We'd love to talk through that. Help people who are in, like, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, if you're an elder, what about your pastor? Yeah. If you're on a board, what about your, the people that are on staff with, with the organization, whatever your situation is, are there people around you who might benefit from you showing them care and concern and curiosity about whether they're experiencing this and whether you can help them yeah great invitation great topic that was that was wonderful i really appreciate you exploring that yeah because there's so much wonderful goodness here there is that we don't want to burn out mm -hmm. from compassion fatigue right so awesome thanks buddy hey folks thanks for tuning in today our team is made up of myself chris conlon and mark wavel and our lead editor is Derek Donnelly. We're a crowdfunded nonprofit. Our free resources exist because of your generous support. To learn more about us or check out the classes that we talk about here, visit us at www.humanproject.us. Thanks for joining us on our mission to bring a million lives closer to the fullness of God's design.